Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 2, verse 10, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13, and 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for the love that you show us daily. God, you never forget us. Not one day, not one moment. We say thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Joshua chapter 2, verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan of Sion and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. All right. So the fame of the Lord has gone before them, right? The children of Israel, they are making their way towards um, the walls of Jericho. These are great and mighty walls, right? And God said he was going to fight their battles before them. He was going to go in and drive out the enemy. It didn't matter how big the enemy, it didn't matter who the enemy was. It could have been Og, it could have been AI, it could have been all these different places. As long as they kept covenant with him, he was driving out those enemies. It was not themselves, right? And so we know that because it was a small nation that they lost the battle to um, a very tiny one, which they only sent a few men to that they ended up losing the battle to because of, you know, disobedience. And so we know that it was God who was doing it and not themselves, right? Because if, if it was themselves, they would have been able to handle a small, tiny army, right? Like AI, but because they were in obedience, that's when God caused them to triumph over AI. That's when God was, was going before them dry driving out the enemy, fighting their battles for them. And, and we know that God does the same thing for us, right? He, we can claim these promises um, of, of God going before us, blessing us and, and, and driving the enemy um, out yes, we have to fight the battle, right? That didn't mean that they didn't have to fight the battle, but they did have the victory because God had already done it. God had already accomplished it in the spirit. They just had to go and take the grounds, right? And so, you know, there is coming a great and mighty victory, right? God is going to part the sea, just like um, the the fame of the parting of the sea um, to these people in Jericho, they had seen it. They knew of it. They knew what was going on. Um, and just like that same thing, the enemy right now knows what's going on in the spirit. It, the fame of God has gone before him, right? It's in the spirit. They know Christ is Lord. They know that, that he's coming back. They know it and they're disturbed and they're trying to do as much as they can for their kingdom so that everybody can come to hell with them, right? They don't go alone. Right. And that's the enemy's enemy's, you know, task. He's always trying to do whatever he can to to thwart the inheritance, to thwart the inheritors, to cause them to fall away from God so that they don't they don't come into the saving knowledge of God or or they do something, you know, that that um, makes them think that they're away from God. And then it tricks them into falling further away from God. Right. Far uh, tripping up and falling um, and, and going in the wrong path. And so God is wanting, and that's how the children of Israel were. Remember God, as long as they were keeping covenant with God during that time, he, he still blessed them. He still kept them. Right. But remember when Balaam, um, paid Balak to, uh, Balak paid Balaam, Balak paid Balaam to, um, to curse the children of Israel. He couldn't curse them. Right. But in the end, he ended up being able to get them 
through their own sin, right? Their own falling, their own falling away from God and and the Moabites um, having relationships with them. And so God wants us to stay in the race. God wants us to make sure we're keeping our eyes focused on the prize. He's gonna part the Red Sea. His fame is already known in the spirit. Everything that we have need of is already done in the spirit. God is doing it, right? And so he's going before us stay with Christ, stay with the Lord, stay under that covering, right? Because he's going to do a great and mighty work that is like the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea. It will be remembered. It will be known. It will not be forgotten. Amen. All right, let's look at Hebrews chapter nine, verse 13. For the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh. And so here, um, most likely James who wrote this, um, um, but it, this is talking about the fact that if a, if a heifer or a bull or a goat can can cause a temporary atonement for defilement purification right um um helping a, a defiled person um to be able to seek god and and make be justified and 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 made right right if a bull or a goat can do those things for temporary atonement how much more so can the son of god's blood purify us and cause us to be able to enter in that's what verse 14 talks about right so this is talking about the blood of animals right and guess what we're not even under that covenant anymore this is the covenant that they were under in in joshua 2 10 right o about the blood of bulls and goats and atonements and and things like that of the law right that those were the things of the law but guess what? We're not even under that. We're in verse 14, where it talks about the blood of Christ and the purification through him. That gives us eternal cleansing, right? His blood was so precious and so pure and so good and so right, right? And he was the son of God. He was a spiritual being who, who, who came down to be made into flesh for us so that he could spill that precious and perfect blood for us and allow us entry into the presence of God. Where is the presence of God? In his kingdom, right? The presence of God is inside of us and it's in his kingdom. And so now we are going to be able to enter into his kingdom. He is going to part that seat. He is going to go before us. He's going to do a mighty miracle that we're not even going to be, be able to even, you know, say that we had any part in that, right? Because God is going to do that. God is going to rapture his church. He's going to part the Red Sea. He is going to cause us to enter into his presence. Why? Not because we've atoned good enough, not because we had enough blood of goats and rams and sheep right? But because we are covered by the blood of Christ, it makes us righteous. We have allowed him to be our Lord and we've accepted that free gift of, of his blood, which covers us. And so now we can enter into the heavenly places and, and not, not have anything stopping us, right? God covered that when he sent his son. Let's look at the third verse. Second Kings chapter two, verse 11. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. All right. And so this is Elijah and Elisha, and they are talking, right? And a whirlwind, a chariot comes down and whooshes them away hallelujah into a heavenly place whooshes him away i said him i said them but i meant him away elijah and so you know god is gonna wish us all away you guys it says and they still went on and talked so meaning that you know we're going to be, it's the blinking of an eye. We're not going to be able to prepare. We might be mid-sentence when the rapture happens. 
Meaning that, yeah, you know, it's coming because remember Elijah and Elisha and all the prophets already knew that this was going to occur. Why? Because it was in the spirit. They had picked it up in the spirit and they knew it was about to occur. I'm telling you, it's in the spirit. It's about to occur. I could not possibly get to the end of the sentence before it occurs. It's going to happen. Believe it. Remember, they kept coming up to Elijah. Don't you know, Elisha, don't you know your master is going to be raptured? You're, you're, he's going to be taken, right? And yet, and still, when it happened, they were running around looking for him, right? But he was taken by the Lord in a chariot. It says, and as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them wow this is it's just just imagine that <laughs> a chariot coming to get god's people right god's got something something's gonna happen y'all it's gonna divide right and left it's gonna be it's gonna leave some and it's gonna take some right? But God is going to do that thing. How is he going to do it? Through the blood of his son, right? It's not the old covenant. It's not the stuff of a lack of relationship, right? It's not the stuff of law. It's the stuff of God's grace. It's the stuff of his love for us, right? It, it's it's the blood of his, of his son, the purified, holy blood of the lamb, the person, not animal, person. When you read in Hebrews 9, a little more in 14 and 15, you know, he was a person. He wasn't an animal. He was a perfect person, right? A, a spirit being made into flesh, perfect in every way, sacrificed, and he atoned for us. It gives us passage, right? It gives us the ability to walk through, right? Remember when, when they had that blood of that, that lamb on the doorpost, the death angel passed over them. They had passage, right? It passed over them. And then they had passage through the Red Sea, right? They walked right on through, right? But the enemy was swallowed up, right? God is, is going to open up a passageway for his people and and those who have been listening in the spirit they're going to know when it's about to happen but guess what they're going to be taken right the ones who who have who have received that blood covering right who have received the lordship of christ that wise bride right is going to be taken into a whirlwind in heaven we don't get um, verses like this very often right and God is letting us know in the spirit this is the temperature right this is the temperature of the spirit right remember when you look up and, and you realize it's gonna rain right you can smell it in the air you can feel it it's hot sometimes it's hot the temperature will tell you that that it's gonna rain right the time of year all of that and, and, you know, you, you get ready to feel, I used to live in Tallahassee and, and in the summertime, it rains every evening in Tallahassee, just about every evening. And so, you know, we knew when it was coming, everyone would get to running and trying to get in their places before the rain came, right? We need to realize that God is a God who is going to cause the rain to come and we have to watch and be ready for when the rain comes. We need to be in place, right? Just like we run between those buildings to try to make sure we have cover. You better make sure you have the covering of Christ over you when this rain comes, right? We need coverage. We need, we need the blood to cover us so that we can have passage. Amen. Do you have passage? God is coming soon. You need Christ in your heart. And you need to be working for him. Amen. Work for him. Live for him. You'll have passage through the blood. Amen. The passage is in the blood. The work is going to get you rewards and treasures. But the passage, that passage is in the blood.
Amen. Allow Christ to be your Lord. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. We confess with our mouth, Lord Jesus, and we believe in our heart that you are Lord and that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. Jesus, forgive us for all of our sins. Help us to be covered by your blood when you come. We love you. We give you praise and honor and glory. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.